Today's October 4th. Today's quote is entitled, Better Marriage, Better Person. You become a better person when you learn how to have a better marriage. And thus, you'll be a nicer person to the whole world. So why do we put this quote in? Well, number one, it's true. Number two, in our scriptures, in our classes, we learn a lot of the negatives about marriage, the material entanglement of marriage, and the frictions and difficulties of, of being married, of raising kids, supporting a family, and so on. And it's meant to ultimately detach us eventually, and it's also meant to give some insight into the nature of Grihasta Ashram, if you're going to enter it, and give insight to a man who may be thinking they want to remain brahmachari as to give reasons why. So that's necessary. We need to detach at some point. But at the same time, when we're married, we need to make it work. And if there's only negatives, if we only talk about and hear about negatives, it can impact our marriage in negative ways, obviously. So we also need to hear about positives. And this is my personal observation. One of the positive things about marriage is it really forces you to be a better person because your marriage doesn't work unless you improve. You're living so closely with another person. You have to learn how to be more considerate, understand and fulfill their needs. You can't be selfish. You can't just do whatever you want whenever you want to. You have to be more balanced compromising, and then you have this person putting a mirror up to you who's, who's showing you things you may not want to see about yourself, as we discussed yesterday. We need people who can shine the light on our own defects, otherwise we become proud or we become out of touch with the mistakes we're making. When you're married, whether you like it or not, there's always this other person to give you feedback, correction, I don't think you should do that, I don't think that's a good idea. Wives do that all the time and their husbands are going to do something and the wives think that this isn't good, I don't trust this person, I think you need to take care of yourself, you're overworking, you're overextended, etc., etc., don't stay up so late. They just care, or husbands care about wives, so they give this kind of feedback, which is just simple loving, it's not critical. But it's beneficial, it helps us improve. And then if we make a marriage work, it's usually because we're making, we're making efforts to be better partners, we're making efforts to work on the relationship, and that spills over into the world. Because a lot of what I have to do in my marriage to forgive, to accept, to be tolerant, etc., is what I have to do in the world to have good relationships with others. So personally, I've always respected Grihastas who have good relationships, who've been married a long time. I always feel like these are people that are just easy to get along with. They've, they've mastered it. They've learned how to do it. They're, they have to be balanced people. They have to be tolerant people. They have to be understanding people. Otherwise, how could their marriage have lasted so long? They have to have some inherent qualities that enable them to have good relationships. So that's one of the great values of being married. Whether you like it or not, if you want the marriage to work, you're forced to become a better person. And as you're a better person to your wife, to your children, naturally, those qualities will carry over into all your other actions. So that's a good plug for being married. It's not a plug for a man who doesn't want to get married. He shouldn't think, well, maybe I should get married because then I have this person to monitor my activities. That's not the point of this. The point is, if you are married or you need to be married, it's a big advantage. And in Grihasta Ashram, we should focus on advantages because our scriptures, as I said, are full of the problems and disadvantages. And we also know that Grihasta Ashram in Krishna consciousness is an ashram to help a couple become more advanced in Krishna consciousness. And if that's what they do, then it's glorious. If they become more materially entangled, then it's a failure. But in any case, working together to improve one, one self is always valuable, and that's what's required in the Grihasta Ashram. 
the unfortunate situation is that sometimes Grihastha couples don't do that. They actually don't work on them themselves or their relationship, and so they don't get the benefit that Grihastha Ashram, that benefit that Grihastha Ashram offers. And rather, they end up with a bad relationship, and they could have improved themselves, but they didn't, and they kind of remain the same, don't want to change. And maybe there's things that they should have changed, and they would be better people to the world if they would have changed, not just to their wife or their husband. No.